Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be doing my final recap from the Chess Global Championship that I played here in Toronto, Canada. Now, as you guys know, in the semifinals, I was matched up against my American compatriot, Wesley So. And we drew our first four games in the best of eight match. And now we're going to take a look at the last four games, which were played yesterday. So in game number five, I started with the white pieces. So here we go. I started with E4. Wesley plays the move pawn to e5, knight f3, knight c6, and now I play d4 instead of playing bishop b5. As you'll note, in the first two games of the match which where I had the white pieces, I played bishop b5 and Wesley essayed the Berlin defense. So this game, I played d4, which is a scotch opening. We get pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, knight to f6, we trade. And now I play knight d2 following in the steps of Nihal Sarin, who also played this in one of the other quarterfinal matches of the CGC against none other than Samuel Sebian. So here Wesley plays d5, we trade, I go bishop to b5, bishop d7 is played, we trade, I castle, bishop e7, b3, castles, and bishop b2. Now this is sort of the first starting position here. Obviously I have a great bishop on this long diagonal towards the knight on f6 and the pawn on g7. Additionally, I'm hoping to play moves like queen f3, rook e1, and rook d1, and put a lot of pressure in the center right away. Now again, it looks kind of scary, but black has plenty of ways to equalize. So Wesley plays this move a5, I go rook to e1, bringing the rook to this open e file and targeting potentially the bishop on e7. Wesley continues with a4, and now I go queen f3. Idea to play rook d1, and again, maybe move the knight and target this pawn on d5, potentially. So Wesley plays rook e8, and now I play this move rook e2. Now, it's worth noting that before the game, I had done a little bit of preparation, and I had reached this position in my prep, but this is where it all ended. And so at this point, I didn't know what the best move was. On my weak laptop, I actually saw that rook e2 popped up, which is why I played the move. However, what I probably should have played here is rook a d1, because after pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. If black plays a move like rook a2, for example, now I can play bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6, I have this very cool move, queen takes d5, because if black trades the rook and then takes the queen, there's a checkmate with rook to e8. So I probably should have played rook d1, but as I said, I was just looking at a lot of various lines. There isn't really a whole lot of theory in this position, and I saw that on my laptop, rook e2 popped up as the top move, so I just played it right away, but I probably should have played rook a d1 instead. So I play rook e2, Wesley trades, I take with a c pawn, which is a somewhat original idea. I could take with an a pawn, and probably after rook takes a1, bishop a1, rook a8. Position is very balanced, even material, not a lot going on here. So I decided to get creative and take with the c pawn, capturing away from the center, but in the process, potentially creating a passed a pawn down the road. Wesley plays rook a6 here, trying to protect the knight on f6, but also planning to play rook a8 and line up the double stack on the a file. So now I play queen to d3, attacking the rook. He goes rook a8. I play a4, c5, and now I play this move rook d1. And Wesley finds an excellent move here with queen b7. I was already starting to feel somewhat optimistic at this point in the game because black is trying to play c4 and swap up pawns. So for example, black would love to get a position like this where all the queen side pawns are gone, and now we only have pawns on the king side, and the game would, would be very, very equal and probably end in a draw shortly thereafter. So Wesley plays queen b7. Now I go knight to f1. And here he plays this move c4. Now, in this position, black is actually quite a bit better after d4. I was kind of hoping he would do this because I thought after d4 I could play something like um, knight to d2, knight to d5, and then, and then a move like, um, I think I was going to play rook to e5 or something of this nature if i do go g3 here this actually loses i believe because after knight f4 forking the queen and the rook when i take the knight there's rook to g6 check i can obviously give up the queen for the rook but this is losing and if i go king f1 there is queen to h1 checkmate so after d4 i did see this move i thought it was maybe a little bit scary but i also thought that black isn't getting anything right away say for example i can just set it up um, with some position like this, just, just to illustrate it. If I can get a position where I have the rooks on the E file and I can even put my knight on C4 potentially, black will never really be able to play against these pawns on the queen side. I think white might even end up being better in the long term, although as you see from the valuation, black is still better here. At any rate, Wesley plays c4, I took, and now I play this move queen to c2 here. The idea is very simple. If black tries to grab the free pawn on a4, I can now take the knight on f6 because after bishop takes f6, there's queen takes a4, rook takes a4, and again, I have rook e8 with the classic back ring checkmate. So black can't really take the pawn because after takes takes a position like this, I can now play a move like rook e3, rook g3. King is very, very weak on g8, and I think white is much better here. Again, computer will probably draw this position, but for a human, it looks horrible with this weakened king side. 
So Wesley plays this move, Bishop F8. I take, and now I miss my re the really the one chance I had in this position. Here I played this move, Queen takes C4. What I should have played was Rook to D4 here, and after Rook to D4, Black has to be extremely precise here. Um, if Black is not precise, he goes Rook C6, and we trade. I simply have an extra pawn on A4, and in the long term. I don't know if I should win this position, but it's going to be very hard to play for black. So I should have played rook d4 because after rook d4, there's really only one move that completely equalizes here for black, and that is to play this move rook to b6. Because after I play a move like rook takes c4 in this position, black can play, I believe it is rook to b1 if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's not rook b1. Um, obviously, this game was played yesterday, so I don't remember exactly what the line was. But I know that after rook b6, black is supposed to have some way to, to equalize and win the a pawn, as I recall. So this this was the move that I know at the, at the deeper depths the computer was giving. Um, but... I did not play this move. If I had played this move, it would have been very interesting to see what Wesley would have done because moves like C3, for example, are also playable. But again, you have to play something like Rook B6. If you go Rook to A6, now I can play Rook to A2, and I believe I can go Queen C2. And with this position here, for example, just to set it up, where I have all these all these pieces, the Queen and the two Rooks guarding the pawn on A4. Long term, Black can probably still draw this, and a computer definitely would. But for a human, it looks like you're just down a pawn in an end game, and it's going to be very miserable to defend. So instead I take on c4, and this was just a miscalculation because after rook to c6 here, I played queen a2. Now I could have gone queen to f4 as well here, this is another try, but after this move queen to b3, attacking the rook and the pawn, I probably can play rook a1, but after rook a1, rook c to a6, now I have to play something like rook a2, and here black can just play g6, and with the rooks very passive on a2 and a1, the idea that black also is bishop g7, attacking the rook on a1, black has no issues whatsoever. So I played queen a2 pretty quickly, and now Wesley goes queen b4. And I essentially just missed here that after rook d7, black has this move rook to f6, which protects the pawn on f7. And now I can I cannot guard the pawn on a4. With rook d4 and rook d4 aren't moves because the queen covers both those squares, and it will end in a draw. So I simply overlooked that after rook d7, there was rook to f6 here. So instead I play rook to b2. I could have played rook a1 here as well, but again, after rook c to a6, uh, I can play something like queen d5, hoping for rook takes a4 and queen takes a8. But if black just plays rook a5 here, I can play maybe queen e4, queen b3. And again, with this pawn on a4 being so weak, black really should have no problems. So instead, I played rook b2, Wesley trades, and now I played rook b8. And after this nice move pawn to f5 here, only move, by the way, the position peters out to what should be a draw. My idea here is to go rook d8, line up the double stack on the 8th rank, and win the bishop. So if black plays like g6 and I go rook d8, I simply win this bishop on f8. Now, keep in mind, this position also is not 100% clear after rook a1 takes and king g7, because black can try to go rook c1 and line up his own double stack on the 8th rank as well. And white is better, but it's not clear cut if this is a forced win or not. So Wesley plays f5 correctly, and now after rook d8, there's rook f6, and at this point, the rest is pretty straightforward and should be a draw pretty soon. I play on for a little bit longer. Not a whole lot happens here. We get this end game. Now, it's worth knowing that here, Wesley plays this move rook c7. Now, this is not the best move to be played, but it's an important move to note because it forces a rook and pawn end game, where even though I have one extra pawn, there will never be any chances for me to win. So I play rook takes bishop. He takes. I take the rook on c7. Wesley takes the knight on d4, I take on h7, he goes g5, and at this point with the 3 versus 2, I have one extra pawn, but the game will be a draw, so the rest doesn't really need um, any analysis, uh, Wesley does not make any real mistakes here, we sort of move our pieces around the board a little bit, um, Wesley always keeps the rook on the 4th rank to pre prevent my king from going up, eventually I try, I think, to bring the king king up by going rook d4 to go king f4 but again wesley finds rook a2 important move here targeting the pawn so if i go king f4 he will capture and after f3 he goes rook a6 another important move because now after king f4 king f6 i cannot check on the sixth rank because the rook on a6 covers all the squares if i ever play rook d5 attacking the pawn on f5 then black will always have rook a4 so the rook covers the sixth rank and if i ever move my rook off the fourth rank he will just check and of course if i ever go g4 this leads to the class of rook and pawn versus rook which is an easy draw as well so I play some more moves, but nothing really exciting happens here. Um, and eventually, I just decide to make a, a draw. Uh, worth noting, by the way, I play this f4 move. The idea is very simple. If black plays rook c3, now I can go king h3 with the idea of king h4 and king g5 to sneak in. Again, this is still a draw with perfect play, but black does not have to allow this. And Wesley correctly plays rook a1. So now if I try to go king h3 and, and sneak up to h4 and g5, black can check with rook h1. And then, again, I can never really bring the king up. So... Very, very precise technique. Again, nothing too special, but worth knowing that you do want to be careful. So the game goes on. 
I play some more moves, and inevitably we end up with a draw worth noting again if I go King H3 here with the Rook on B8, Black and check once again, and it's the same thing. So I play Rook A1, we get King F7, Rook A5, King G6, now I check, and again I play on for quite a bit more, but nothing nothing really happens here, and eventually um, we just we just draw this, this end game leads to stalemate and that's all she wrote so first game ends in a draw i definitely was not super happy with this game i thought i might have had some small chance for like a move or two but it wasn't ever really there so the first game or the fifth game of the match ends in a draw and we move on now to the sixth game so in the sixth game i am playing here with the black pieces of course wesley starts with e4 i play e5 knight f3 knight to c6 bishop to c4 knight f6 d3 bishop c5 and again we get our classic gucci piano um all very standard theory we played this before now wesley plays h3 in this game in the previous game the uh, fifth game or not the fifth game sorry third game of the match i believe it went b4 h6 knight d2 wesley is skewed playing this move h3 um so he tried to play it without that in this game he plays h3 h6 is played knight d2 rook e8 all very standard here and now rook b1 is played by wesley and now i play this move b5 now it's worth noting that i actually had a game in the rapid chess championship some weeks back with this exact position against none other than hans neiman himself uh in that game i also played b5 i believe and it ended in a draw shortly thereafter so here after rook b1 i played b5 rook a1 and now i play this move rook b8 probably if i wanted to play ideas like rook b8 it would have been better to just go bishop b6 right away um because rook b8 is a little bit awkward since it seeds the a file immediately whenever whenever i play bishop b6 after takes takes white is always going to have this uncontested open a file here so knight g3 is played i play d5 here wesley continues with queen c2 i trade and now i play a strange move knight e8 now the reason i played knight e8 was i wanted to put my knight on d6 and potentially c4 whereas on f6 it's not really doing anything the pawn on e4 is guarded there's no square in the center to jump to so i try to reroute my knight to d6 and c4 it's i also remember a game that i played against magnus carlson the world champion I believe it was in, in a Tal Memorial Blitz, and I want to say like 2009 in Russia. And it, there were a lot less pieces on the board, but Magnus found this idea of 98, 96, 94 against me. Uh, all the internet sleuths out there can find the game, but he played a similar idea, and I vaguely recalled it, so I wanted to play something along these lines. Now, keep in mind, this is not a great move, 98. There are better options, but I didn't see a reason why it should be terrible. And the structure is very, very solid here as well. So bishop e3 is played we trade i go knight to d6 i need to maybe play knight c4 wesley plays rook d3 i go queen e8 here he goes knight d2 and now i play knight to d8 now this is not the move that i probably should have played i initially i wanted to play knight e7 the reason i didn't play knight e7 is because i thought that after knight b3 knight c5 this knight has a great outpost and i thought by going to d8 when white plays knight b3 for example i can play knight b7 and i can test both the c5 and a5 square i also potentially cover f5 but i can still jump with the other knight to c4 so i thought knight d8 made a little more sense but this is kind of scary here already wesley plays knight f5 i go queen to f8 knight to b3 worth noting i don't want to trade trade on f5 because after something like knight e4 here white has a great outpost for the knight he can play f6 knight c5 rook g3 he also can control the open d file with rook a d1 as well and this is probably simply lost for black so instead i play queen f8 wesley goes knight b3 now i go knight a b7 again covering both c5 and a5 and now wesley trades on d6 computer actually thinks that white maintains a significant advantage after this move queen to e2 um to me it didn't look obvious why white should be so much better after say a move like rook f6 or even g6 for that matter but the computer thinks that after knight e3 with knight knight d5 jumps white is significantly better at any rate wesley plays knight d6 now again keep in mind that you, you don't really have all day to think you can't use like five or six minutes on any individual move so without all that time to think you kind of don't really have as many options available so after knight d6 i take and now the game peters out very quickly into a draw i play rook c8 idea to play c5 and open up the c file rook d5 c6 wesley goes knight c5 and we trade and the game ends in a peaceful draw our sixth straight draw in this match and we're still knotted up at three to three so now we'll move to the seventh game so obviously at this point there are six draws now one thing that was in my mind especially after the first day not so much during the first day but after the first day is that basically i felt that if i could get this to armageddon i would have very very good chances to win because i felt that i would bid low and i thought that if we get into situations where we're in time scrambles i should be the favorite now keep in mind that this was one of the thoughts in my mind overall and it really was guiding my play uh particularly 
in the seventh game until a critical moment. So I start by playing e4, we get e5, knight f3, knight c6, all very normal. Now I go knight c3, knight f6, and now I play the move bishop b5. Wesley plays knight d4, bishop c5 is also a move here as well. I go bishop c4, bishop c5, I take the pawn, queen e7. Again, all very standard theory here, nothing too special. Knight to f3, d5, I take, he takes, I go knight e3, he plays bishop g4, pinning the knight here, I cannot take because that would that would leave my king in check, so I go bishop e2, we trade, castles, and now I play d3, and here Wesley makes an interesting decision, he plays this move queen e7. According to modern day theory, after this move, bishop takes f3 here, for example, queen takes f3, takes, takes rook h, e8, black is supposed to be completely equal here with very, very minimal chances for white, I thought after king f1, I'm up a pawn, I know it's a double f pawn, so it's something special, but I thought the game goes on, at any rate, according to theory, black is supposed to be completely fine here, so I was very surprised when Wesley played this surprising move, queen to e7, um, and now I played bishop d2, rook e8, castles, knight d5, and rook h e1, and so I'm up a pawn here in the center, I have this nice pawn on d3, I, I've castled my king, and I, I don't think this is anything special per se for white, but there are chances long term. So Wesley goes queen d7, I play queen f1, sidestepping the pin, also now I can capture the bishop on g4. So Wesley goes bishop h5, I play king b1, apparently knight c4 is better, don't ask me why. Wesley plays f6, important move because first of all it stops me from ever moving the knight to e5, also it creates a nice square on f7 to reroute the bishop um, from h5 to where there are threats towards the pawn on a2. So now I go h3, he goes b6, I play g4, bishop f7, knight f5, and now Wesley plays this move knight b4. Now this move actually surprised me. I thought that after g6, probably I have to go like knight d4 or knight g3. I still didn't really think this was anything special for me objectively, but after knight b4, I started to get kind of optimistic. So I trade, I trade, and now I play a3, which is also maybe not the best move. Knight d2 is another move, but knight d2 felt very passive to me, trying to reroute the knight to b3. Um, computer actually really likes it, but I thought a3 was better simply because queen d5 does not do anything. I can just take the bishop, and after queen a2, king c1, Queen a1, king d2, queen b2, I just have rook b1. King is obviously very safe on d2, and I'm up a knight. So I thought that I should play a3, kick the bishop away, and then just contest the e-file possibly. So he goes bishop f8, I play knight d2 now, he goes h5, and now I play rook e1. Now in retrospect, I probably should have played this knight e4 move. The reason I did not play it was I was kind of a little bit worried about my queen side here. I had this feeling there might be like a queen b5 maybe, or a queen d5, or even a queen e6, and it just feels a little bit loose here on the queen side, so that's why I didn't play it. So I go rook e1. Wesley plays rook d8, which actually shocked me. I thought he was going to just trade the rooks. With the two bishops versus the two knights here, white is still up a pawn, but I feel like black has pretty good drawing chances after g6. Say takes, takes, and something like, I don't know, bishop h6, or even queen e6 with bishop h6. And I wasn't really convinced here. I thought that this should still be about equal. So instead he plays rook d8. Now I go knight to e4. Wesley plays king b8. And now I go knight to c3. Very simple idea to stop any ideas like queen b5 or queen d5 here. There's also no queen e6 either. So now there are no threats on the light square diagonals or even the dark squares either. So he goes bishop e6. I play knight d4. He goes bishop f7. And now I play this move rook e4. Wesley goes bishop g6, which is a mistake because after rook f4, I think Wesley's initial idea was he thought he had bishop d6 here attacking the rook. But now I have a very nasty trick with queen g2 because after bishop takes f4, I can go knight c6 check. If he goes to b7 or a8, a8 for that matter, I always have knight e5 winning the queen. And if he goes to c8, again, I have this beautiful move, knight to e5, attacking the queen and threatening checkmate in one with queen a8. Of course, if he takes, there's mate in one. And there's no no way to save save the game here because if you go queen d5, I just take with the knight. If you move the queen, uh, say, to e6, queen a8 is still checkmate because the knight on e5 covers the escape square on d7. So I think Wesley overlooked this when he allowed rook f4 because now the problem with the knight on d4 is there are actual actually serious threats on the light squares. So he takes, I go queen g2, bishop e8, I take back, bishop d6, rook e4, bishop e5. And this is where I make a, a actually not here, sorry, I play knight c2, g5, and this is where I make a big mistake. In this position, I thought, I thought for quite a while here, uh, I think I thought for like 45 to 50 seconds, and I played this move knight f3, which is not the best move. I really wanted to play knight f5, and this was my initial intention. The problem is that during the game, I thought there was something like queen b5 here, attacking the pawn on b2, and after d4, for some reason, I got scared of bishop c6, and I thought after takes, rook d1, knight c1, there was some tactic here. I think I thought maybe queen d5 was a move here. Um, 
and I was just worried that there were there were gonna there was something was gonna hang and I was gonna lose the game. Rather than trusting my instinct and and knowing that there was nothing here, like I didn't see it, but I felt there was probably something I was overlooking. Um, so if I had played knight f5, black is still very much in the game after c5 here, stopping the pawn push, but white is significantly better. Instead, I play knight f3, Wesley goes bishop d6, I go knight e d4, bishop f7, now I put the other knight on f5, we got bishop c5, knight e3, stopping bishop d5, and now we get to this critical moment after rook e4, rook c4, this repetition. Now, in this position, I decided to sack the rook, and the main reason I sacked the rook is we were getting low on time here, both of us had about a minute and a half, I think the times are a little bit off, but we had about a minute and a half, and again, there were two things in my mind throughout this match, first one was get to Armageddon, because if you get to Armageddon, you're you're gonna bid low and i felt very confident that i would not lose the game based on the way the match had been going so that was option one on the other hand based on my experiences in game three where we did get low on time and we played this crazy knight and pawn end game i thought that if we were low on time and and the position was balanced or i thought i had some chances where, where it wasn't clear cut it was complicated but there was little risk to lose i should go for it so i made the committal decision to take now take on c5 now in retrospect this was obviously a mistake as we know from the outcome of the match but if i had the opportunity to do this again i still think most likely i would have made the same decision because what i played with knight d2 is completely fine here i go i go uh, queen to h3 we get this critical position here after queen to f3 and queen d4 guarding the pawn and now i make the mistake in this position i i firmly believe that if i could play this position again say a hundred times i think that probably in like 95 of them i would play this move knight d to c4 and i i don't i don't know if i would have won the game but i feel very confident in saying that i don't think i would have lost the game if i had played this move because the, the point after knight d c4 is very simple black does not have time to bring the bishop back to c8 to protect the king because i had knight a5 here and this idea of knight a5 is completely deadly so black is gonna have to either take on c4 or play bishop d5 in either case if we reach a position like this for example there's no chance of me losing i have a great knight that's outpost on c4 and black at best can maybe save the game with rook e8 um black can also take on c4 which is another option but again after knight takes c4 you have to do something like queen d5 and with this perfectly outposted knight on c4 i think there's zero chance that i would lose this i think there's a very good chance that i would have actually won this game if i had played this move instead i play b3 which on first glance doesn't look that bad because i just want to over protect the c4 square and i think i can put the knight here at any time the problem is after playing this move wesley correctly finds this great resource bishop c8 and now i'm never going to have any ideas to attack on 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 the square weak squares around the king so if i go knight c4 like i did in the game after bishop b7 even if i get a knight to a5 just to illustrate it black can always just go bishop a8 and there's no there are no threats here the other big problem with playing b3 as, as i started to realize is that now there are always problems where if black can get the rook to h8 there's gonna they're gonna be back rank checkmate issues or not back rank checkmate issues but they're gonna be issues on the dark squares here around my king on b2 and a1 so say i go queen e2 for example after rook to h8 suddenly there are all these big problems that i have to deal with because i played this b3 move specifically so i go queen h3 wesley plays queen f4 and now i make the fatal blunder i play this move knight a5 here what i should have played was i should have played queen h7 this was my initial instinct in fact i think i went almost to reach for the queen and play it before not playing this move i should have played this because after queen takes f2 i can still play queen e7 and the game definitely continues here again black is probably still a little bit better after rook to h8 uh, but i can play as quiet moves like king b2 here and i should be okay now again at this point i don't think that if i had done this i would have won the game i think it probably would have been a draw but i would have been in the game instead i play knight a5 blunder and queen f3 here because now if i go queen h7 black is queen to h1 check forcing a trade of the queens and after this there's really not much i can do here uh with queens coming off the board uh queens coming off the board here now the weak pawns don't matter and the rook is much more valuable than the knight on a5 so i play queen h7 anyway we get queen h1 we trade i try to bring my king closer but unfortunately wesley has this nice move rook f4 if he were to take on g4 after knight e4 i would still have very good chances to save the game and draw but wesley correctly finds rook f4 and now the rest is pretty much hopeless i play b4 we trade he takes i go knight e4 f5 i take I go knight to d5 here um simply trying to blockade the pawn on, on, on a dark square but wesley makes no mistakes um we get he plays c6 rook g1 i go c4 check bishop f5 king d4 again if black plays f3 here i can go king e3 and pray for a miracle not that there is a miracle but i can at least pray for a miracle um at any rate he plays rook e2 here and now i go knight g5 trying to stop the pawn 
King C7, Knight to H5. And now Wesley makes a move, which it's it's actually not a blunder, but I know during the game he, he miscalculated this. He plays Rook G2, Knight F3, Bishop G4, I take. And now very unfortunately is Rook F2. Because if he plays Bishop F3 here, I can actually trade, go King, go, or not King C5, sorry, I can go B5 here. And this is going to be a draw because I can run my King back to the corner on A1 and it's the wrong color Bishop for this Queenie square. It's a light square Bishop versus a dark square Bishop. Unfortunately for me, Wesley still is Rook F2 here. I go Knight E5, takes. Now he can go Rook F1 and Rook B1. And the rest is pretty straightforward. Um, in this position, I could have tried to continue with uh, Knight to F2, A5, and Knight to E4 here. Actually, after A5, I resign. I could have tried to continue with Knight E4 because if Black plays A4, there is one trick here with Knight C5. And after A3, I have Knight A6, forking the King and the Rook. But in this position, Black can just go something like King B6, slowly bring the Rook around. And against the player of Wesley's caliber, uh, there's pretty much no hope. I, I probably should have played Knight E4 anyway, forcing him to go King B6, but it really wouldn't have changed the outcome regardless. So I lose this very, very tough seventh game of the match and with that I trail four to three so let's move to the eighth game so after losing the seventh game now I'm in the very very unfortunate situation the final game of the match down one game where I have to try and win with the black pieces so Wesley plays d4 this time and now I just play g6 playing a modern setup obviously I have to change my openings completely because there's only one result that will lead to an Armageddon so the game continues pretty normally now here I play knight d7 what I should have done is I should have just played knight f6 e4 uh, not king f8 sorry castles and after bishop e2 played knight bd7 if i was going to play like i did in the game instead i just go knight d7 right away he plays e4 i go knight to f6 and now wesley plays this move e5 now this is a very very tricky tricky move here because there are a couple problems first of all black is probably okay if i trade and go knight g4 e6 and knight d e5 here but the problem is in a position like this after trades and takes 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 while i'm not worse with queens completely off the board and even material there is zero chance that i'm ever going to win this end game just zero chance whatsoever so I can't take the pawn. So then I'm in a situation where do I go knight g4 or knight g8? Knight h5 would uh, would just lose the knight because after g4, knight simply has no squares. So I'm in a very tough spot. Do I go knight g4 or knight g8? Now I decided to play knight g4 primarily because I want to try and provoke Wesley. In a situation like this where it's a must win and no other result is good enough, um, you, you don't really care. Like if you play something bad, it doesn't matter because there's only one result that's good. So if you lose the game, you lose the game, but you have to do whatever you can to win. Now, I probably should have played knight g8, but the reason I didn't do this also is I thought that after takes, takes, and bishop e2 and bishop e3, um, this is just a very straightforward position. And black is probably okay. Um, I, I think white's only marginally better, but I think, again, there's zero chances of me winning this position. So I go knight g4, Wesley plays h3, knight e6, and now he plays g4. Now, this is a very, very good move. Uh, I was not expecting it, however, in a situation where Wesley did not need to win the game, but he plays it anyway. So I go knight g8 here, queen e2, I play b6, trying to fion fionketto my bishop to b7. We get bishop f4. Now, it's worth noting knight g5 actually just wins on the spot here. I did spot this move during the game, but I, I, I just figured, okay, whatever. If this happens, I'll probably, like, take and go, like, knight f6. And after queen a8, I'll just take and pretend that nothing has happened. Of course, computer thinks white is just winning, and there's there's nothing even remotely close to, to, to compensation after knight b5. But again, it is what it is. Instead, Wesley goes bishop f4. I play bishop b7. He castles. I trade. And now I go e6, stopping any ideas like e6 or knight g5. Unfortunately, this is still completely horrible for me. He goes bishop g2, knight e7, rook d2. Now I sidestep, so when he lines up the double stack, there's no queen on c8, and I can move the knight. So I play bishop c6. Actually, I could have played knight c5, but I think after knight c5, b4 is just horrible. Even knight a6, a3, and I, I just can't do anything here. So I go bishop c6, Wesley plays b4, trying to play b5 and remove the bishop from c6 where it guards the knight on d7. So I go a6, Wesley plays bishop g5, and now I play h6, he trades, b5, I take, and I go bishop d5, takes, takes, and now Wesley makes a mistake here. He plays this move, rook takes d5, which of course, maybe the mistake is too strong because evaluation shows how terrible this truly is, but the thing is here, if, if Wesley had gone knight d4, and I go rook e8. He can even play f4 here. And there is literally no chance in a million years of me ever getting any counterplay 
or even hoping to save the game here. White has an overwhelming position. Pawn on d5 is weak. The center is very solid. You have knight c6. You're going to also win the pawn on d5 and, and have these double stacked rooks on d2 and d1. And this position is just completely crushing and it's game over. Instead, Wesley takes. Nothing wrong with it. But after knight c5, Wesley plays knight d4, rook e8. And now Wesley makes a huge mistake. Here, Wesley plays this move rook to d8. In this position, again, Wesley can play f4. And after king f8, knight to c6, there's really nothing I can do. White will go rook d8. And with this, these pawns in the center, this should be game over. Alas, Wesley plays this move rook d8, which is a huge mistake because after I take, Knight c6 is played, king f8 takes, takes, takes. In this position, white actually is not in time to build the big center with f4 because I had knight d3 check, forking the king and the pawn. And once I went f4, e5 will also follow. So he goes bishop f1. And now after g5, it's very, very hard for white to play because he's going to lose his e pawn. And as you'll notice, like all my pawns and all my pieces pretty much are on dark squares. And white has a light square bishop. Now, again, white is still a little bit better here. But in a game where you only need to draw, this is not what you want at all. So Wesley plays queen e3, I go rook d5, bishop c4, I take the pawn, and now he goes queen to f3. Now it's worth noting in this position, I actually thought I thought that Wesley should have just taken the rook, and after bishop to f4, played king d2. It's worth noting that if he takes on f4, this actually loses, because I have knight d3 check, forking the king and the queen, and then I take with the knight, forking the bishop and the pawn, and I suspect this endgame is losing. Um... But I was very surprised that, that Wesley did not take and play king d2. Because after takes, takes king e7, king to d4, f6. I thought that after bishop c4, king d6, and f3, this should be an easy draw for white. Because I can never really move the knight because then the king infiltrates on f5 and g6. And if I move my king, white can always go king d5. I have to go back. And it just feels like this position should, should always basically be a draw, no matter what I do. So I was very surprised when Wesley chose to play queen f3. Because now I go bishop to f4 plays king b1 worth noting queen f4 is not a move again because now i play knight d3 check if white takes knight i take the queen and if white moves the king i take the queen with a knight and after takes takes i simply have an extra knight on the board so wesley plays king b1 but now after rook d4 the reason I, I was so surprised to see this and why now i thought i had legitimate chance to win the game is because as you'll notice i have one pawn on a light square but every other piece is on a dark square and it's actually very well protected i have a great knight on c5 this outpost the bishop is held together by the pawns bishop holds the pawn on c7 so white can really not do anything here and if anybody's trying to win it's definitely black so Wesley goes bishop b3, I play knight e4, he goes king c2, and now after a very long thing here, I go back to c5. Rook d2 looks very good on first glance, because after king b1, I have this nifty move, rook to e2, protecting the knight, white cannot take on e2 because of the fork, but the problem is after rook e2, white can go queen d3 here, and after bishop to e5 in this position, I believe the best move for white here is... Um, I think it's bishop to c4 if I remember correctly and I simply can't do anything if I go knight c3 check white will sack the queen and we draw the position with the opposite color bishops um, if I play rook b2 king king c1 if I try to take on f2 now white has queen f5 here and there are all kinds of problems with the mating threats and there's simply no way for black to continue playing for the win so it's a great tragedy that this doesn't work here but as i realized i can still just go back to c5 and with everything on the dark squares i just keep playing at this point i was also up about four minutes on the clock i know the clocks show five minutes but i think i had a little bit more than that so i was very very optimistic here and, and hopeful that i might be able to to win this game so i go bishop e5 queen e3 rook e4 queen d2 now i play rook f4 queen e2 now it's worth noting actually after the game having thought about this I felt that the um, that in this position, the best chance for me to have won the game probably was to have played this move rook to d3 here. Because after queen a8, king g7, white's bishop is under attack here. And the computer actually thinks bishop c2 is really the best move here. Would Wesley have found this move? I'm not sure. Because if I take on h3, white can go queen d5. Um, I can always go rook d4 or rook d2. But I felt like this was probably one of the best opportunities I had during the game um, in this end game. At any rate, I play knight e4. We, we, we repeat. I, I make some more repetitions and now I go bishop f6 again I can always just put my rook on f4 and then go bishop d4 and there's never any risk whatsoever so Wesley goes f3 play rook d7 bishop c4 I go rook e7 and now I play king g7 and rook e5 worth noting white cannot play f4 here because after uh I think or maybe white can play it I actually thought I could take and play rook e4 although there's just queen f1 which is completely fine although after rook e3 it still feels kind of scary to play here at any rate, um, Wesley goes bishop b3 first to sidestep any tricks. I go rook e5, and now he plays f4. I take the pawn. I could have here obviously taken on b3 again. 
After pawn takes rook takes b5, there's no danger here for me, but the problem is that this position should objectively be a draw here because white's pawns are now in the light squares and I can't easily win the light square pawns either. Now keep in mind, the show goes on and I probably should have done something like this, but this still should be a draw. However, with the time advantage here, I also wanted to try and keep as many pieces on the board as possible. So I take, he takes, and now I go knight b7. Of course, I could still take on b3 and take b5, but I go to b7. Bishop c4, I play rook c5, king d1, knight d6, bishop d3, rook d5, king e2, um, and I play rook d4 here, which is a mistake, of course. What I should have probably played here um, was just gone back to c5 and waited, or maybe gone rook e5, but by playing rook d4, now there's queen c1, which attacks a pawn on c7, and if I lose the pawn on c7, then b6 will become weak, my knight becomes weak, and I lose the, the grip on the position. So I go knight to e8 here, queen c6, king f8, Bishop f5, I play bishop g5, trying to reroute my knight to f6. Again, white is still better here. Um, he plays h4, I go rook d6, guarding the pawn on h6. If I were to take, obviously queen takes h6 is winning. So I play rook d6, queen h1, bishop to f4 here. Once it goes queen a8, I go bishop g3. And now he plays this move g5. Now, this is a completely reasonable move here. Um, I, I actually thought h5 was also completely fine, but he goes g5. And the only reason I don't like this is that now after takes, um, in this position, the winning move, for, the move that's supposed to be winning for white is to play h5 with the idea of going h6. So like if I play bishop e5, h6, I cannot take the pawn because of bishop d7 here, and white will win the knight. Now, maybe rook e6 is still a draw. Maybe. I doubt it, but maybe it's a draw. At any rate, a draw is good enough for west instead Wesley takes and now after bishop to f4 it gets very tricky again because the problem is white cannot go queen g2 guarding the pawn on g5 because I have rook d2 check so white has to gambit the pawn on g5 and the show goes on so again we keep playing now I get I, I'm basically able to reset my pieces once again where I'm going to go bishop d6 and rook c5 however with no pawns on the king side it becomes a much more difficult task to try and win because now my king is always going to be open if I go to like f8 there's always queen eight if I ever go to g g7 there's g2 and h1 now so it even though black is a little bit better here it's very very hard to play so now Wesley plays a4 I go knight d5 queen h3 bishop f6 queen f3 knight c3 king e1 and now i missed my last real opportunity here to try and win the game i should have played knight takes a4 in fact i'm not even sure why i didn't play it honestly um but i think i just assumed he was going to move the king and there was going to be some some check and i thought that i could maybe take the pawn later so instead i throw in the check and i take but this is a big mistake because now the bishop gets to c4 again in this position after king one if i take the bishop is not getting to c4 and i'll be able to just go like rookie five knight c5 or knight c3 back and then knight d5 again still should be a draw with perfect play but i think there are going to be chances at any rate i check and now after bishop c4 i check he goes king c2 i go back Queen a8 is played, knight c5, queen c6, and now I play knight d7, king b3, and I make a mistake here by playing rook to e3 check. What I should have played here was rook to e5, rook to c5, sorry, but after queen e4, knight e5, bishop e2, again, it black has two pawns here, but this should be a draw because I can never win this pawn on b5 because the light square bishop guards it. I can't really push the pawn, and again, there it just isn't anything happening. Instead, I play rook e3 check, he goes king a2, play bishop e5, which is a mistake, um, maybe not, a, maybe not a huge mistake, but after queen d5, I now have lost all chances to win the game because if I ever push the pawn, white will always have a million checks here. And at the very least he can draw. So instead I play bishop to d6, he takes, now it's worth noting there is queen g5 here, which he missed, which wins the rook on e3, takes, plays bishop e6, I go rook e2, I, I check. Now again, even here I can still play knight e5, um, but again, really just no chances to ever win and there should be a draw. So I check, I go here, check. And now he goes bishop d5, and here I, I make a fatal blunder with rook f1. What I should have played was bishop to d6, and after bishop c6, king f8, queen h4, hitting the rook and the king, I still have rook e7, and the game should be a draw, but it doesn't really matter at this point because there's no way that I'm winning. So I just blunder with rook f1, he checks, and then I blunder this, this queen c4 check, which picks up the rook on f1. And with that, unfortunately, I lose the match 5-3. to three. Now, what to say about the match overall? Obviously, I'm disappointed in the result. I feel like I definitely should have won that 7th game. I do not really regret the decision that I made to play rook takes bishop on c5, uh, considering how low on time we were. Um, I thought it was the right choice. And again, I think if I had played knight to c4, I would have at least drawn, if not won that game. Alas, I played that b3 move. You can say what you want, maybe not being completely sharp, or, you know, whatever, just a little bit, just that little, little bit, you know, made me play b3. And of course, it cost me the game and effectively the match. Um, 
So I, I, I think if I could do it again, I still would have probably made that same decision under the circumstances. Also, you know, I have to keep in mind that at the end of the day, I live by this philosophy that everything happens for a reason. And in my heart of hearts, as I look at this all, I feel very strongly that I should have won this match. But on the other hand, I won the Fisher Random World Championship, which was just held in Iceland. Now, in that case, I definitely should not have won the Armageddon game against Jan Napomniachi, which made me the 960 World Champion. So I essentially, in my mind, I'm in a situation where it's like, well, Hmm. As I look at it, I firmly believe I should have beaten Wesley in this match, but I also firmly believe that I should not have won the Armageddon game against Nepo. So would I rather have won this match against Wesley and lost the Armageddon against Nepo or won the Armageddon and lost against Wesley? Because generally you can't have everything you want in life. And as I look at it, I don't really have like one preference one way or the other, um, but Winning one of the two is is very, very important. And I think at the end of the day, that's why I'm not as upset as I would be if I hadn't. Um, you know, if I hadn't won in 960 and I had this match against Wesley, I think I'd be significantly more unhappy. But it is what it is. And you always move on. Uh, there are little things that I could have done differently. But at the end of the day, when we were in the critical moments, Wesley defended very, very well. And he was just a little bit better than me. Um, and that's, that's really how it goes. So at the end of the day, unfortunately, that ends my run here in the Chess Global Championship in Toronto. I will obviously be getting back to my regular routines pretty soon. Uh, back to my real job as a streamer, obviously, and a content creator for all of you guys on YouTube and Twitch. But I hope you have enjoyed the recaps I've done here from Toronto, and um, we'll be back with more content very, very soon. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you have not already, and uh, there's just going to be a lot more to come, so I'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. Bye.